Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we answer the question, can you really trust the warning lights in your car? So on today's modern vehicles, we have a plethora of different warning lights, things to tell us when our tire pressure is low, when our coolant is low, when our car's overheating, when our oil's low, when our oil's too full, when our washer fluid is empty, and when we're out of our lane, when our brake pads are worn down, when our seatbelt's not on, holy crap, it's a Christmas tree in the instrument cluster when all these lights come on. But the question I have is, can we really trust, put full trust into these lights? Well, it just so happens that I actually have a couple of answers for that question. This all came about by me doing an experiment on my 05 Passat. My Passat has warning indicators for the brake pads. Basically, when the pads get down to a certain level, a little light pops on in the cluster and says, hey, dummy, it's time to replace your brake pads. It doesn't really say that, but that's how I interpret it. And I wanted to see just how far I could go until the light came on. So for some background, my 05 Passat wagon is a 1.8 turbo automatic. It was my wife's car. Now it's my car, love the car, daily drive it, owned it since 07, uh, and it has just about 153,000 miles on the original front brakes. And I wanted to see just how far it would go until the light came on. Well, one day I'm going and I do a little bit of an aggressive brake, and I hear some noise coming from the right front corner. And of course, you know, I got my pocket flashlight, I get out, I shine my flashlight at the brakes, and realize there's almost zero pad left. How can it be that I have no brake pad, yet the warning indicator's not on? This is the pad that came off the outboard side, so the side towards the wheel of my Passat on that right front corner. You can see it's completely ground down. It even made a bit of contact with the rotor. This one, on the other hand, is the inboard side. So there's about a three, four millimeter difference, give or take. This isn't horribly abnormal to have one pad worn a little bit differently than the other, so I'm not concerned about any type of braking problems with my car, but look at what this led to. This led to having one side, the inboard side, worn a little less than the outboard side. If I would have waited until that inboard pad worn down far enough in order to trigger that brake wear indicator light, I probably would have lost that outboard pad altogether. It would be laying on the road somewhere because I would have had almost no brakes whatsoever. So in this case, we can sort of trust it, but it just didn't really work out. Now, if this car had a wear indicator on the inboard and the outboard pad, similar to maybe the Torag, uh, then it wouldn't have been a problem. In fact, it would have come on miles and miles and miles ago, probably thousands of miles ago. But the flip side of that, if we take the Torag for example, a lip in the rotor can actually cause this to come on prematurely. I've seen Torags with brake wear indicator lights on and they still have at least this much pad, if not more. So we can't fully rely 100% and wait for the bing of the light, the warning light, or as some people call it, the idiot light, the dummy light, the nanny light, the pick your favorite term light to come on. This is why it's so important, guys, to make sure that we're doing good, proper inspections on our car. We're doing things like checking the tire pressure, checking our brakes, checking our oil level, checking our coolant, brake fluid, washer fluid, all of that stuff, because we don't wanna simply just 100% rely on these lights. They can trick us, they can lie to us, they can come on for no reason at all. They can come on for a very minor reason, like it was a little cold, so your tire pressure light bings on, or, I've seen plenty of cars that have had drivability problems, transmission problems, braking issues, and have absolutely zero lights on in the dash. In fact, most of the time, check engine lights don't come on at the first sign of failure. They actually require two failures in a row, this is called two-trip monitoring, in order to populate the check engine light to where the customer or the driver is gonna see it. As technicians and DIYers that own scan tools, sometimes we can bypass that and go in and find a pending code that maybe just hasn't turned the light on yet. But I have seen plenty of cases, like I mentioned, where 
the car drove terrible or the transmission barely would shift and there's nothing stored in the computer. Now, all that being said, I actually like a lot of these lights. In fact, the tire pressure light is probably one of the most loved and hated, more on the hated side, things on the vehicle when it comes to warning lights. We've had thousands of cars come in with customers concerned of my tire pressure light keeps coming on, and we find that the tire's just low due to temperature fluctuations, or it just hasn't been checked in a while. But I will say that the amount of bad tire wear due to pressure issues has gone down dramatically since tire pressure monitor became standard or required by the government. This is actually a good thing because now people are getting some kind of warning in their cluster that's really annoying and nobody wants to see in order for them to basically force them to take action to get rid of that light. So for every time a warning light comes on and has a deliberate purpose where it's actually doing good for you, there are times that it comes on or doesn't come on in sort of an erroneous or in error type way. So to finally answer the question, can you trust the warning light, dummy light, idiot light, nanny light? It all really depends. Unfortunately, most people don't know what kind of system they have. They don't know how their brakes are monitored. They don't know what it's gonna to take to cause a check engine light to come on or the tire pressure light to come on. This is why, again, visual inspections and checks on your car on a regular basis, monthly, weekly, twice a year, every quarter, whatever works for you is so, so, so important. This is one of the reasons why I really hate 10,000 mile oil changes. Perhaps this type of brake wear could have been caught on a 5,000 mile service, we're in a 10,000 mile service, it very likely the brakes may not have been recommended and then worn down to the point where you're metal to metal and instead of resurfacing rotors or putting just pads on it, you gotta buy new rotors as well. And for those of you wondering, yes, I did put new fresh brake pads on my Passat. I also resurfaced the rotors. There was plenty of rotor material to resurface and plus it's my car so if I only get half the life on it, uh, I'm actually really good because if those rotors last to 220K, that's a thumbs up for this guy on saving some money on some brake rotors. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. I love to hear your thoughts on the idiot light, dummy light, warning light, what do you call it? And what do you think over all of our cars having this? If you like this video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. You know I always do appreciate that. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube. Don't forget to ding the bell or over at humblemechanic.com. If you want exclusive content you can get nowhere else as well as amazing discounts to places like Adams Polishes, Scanner Danner's Book, Black Forest Eurowise, NT Knives, Eastwood Sonic Tools and more. Check out the crew membership program. The link is down in the description. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.